Hey guys, it's me, Mr. 250, and welcome back to Steins Gate Zero. Doing a little pre-recording here since I'm going to be gone for a couple days, so just keep that in mind with comments. I'm only going to be gone for less than a week, so it shouldn't be too much, but it's long enough that I need to record a couple of these. Now, we come back to the scene was indescribable. I haven't seen beyond this, but I feel pretty certain that the very next line of text is going to describe the scene. Let's see if I'm right. The only words I could come up with were a palace of junk. That's fairly descriptive for being indescribable. <laughs> And here we go, describing more of it. The desk and bed were still where they'd been, but everything else had changed. Books and notepads and other strange objects were piled up to the ceiling in layers. What may have started as a temporary pile of books had become a wall that reached to the top of the room. How does, how does Maho reach that? Walls made of hundreds of books were scattered about the room, forming, forming a small labyrinth. In some places the path was so narrow that you need to turn sideways to get through. The light from the ceiling no longer reached the floor, so small lights had been set up on top of the carpet. They were like torches in an underground labyrinth. See, they're describing a scene that feels a little different from what I'm seeing. See, what I'm seeing is there's a lot of books and there's some trash. Not like cathedral of books here but maybe that's just me. Strangely, the space wasn't dirty. The result of Maho and Moka's attempts to maximize their creative output was the construction of a labyrinth in the guest room. In a sense, it was the highest application of the principles of a functional beauty, but it was still a palace of junk. Yeah, see, they say it doesn't look dirty. It looks like it might be dirty just because of all, like, the cans and papers everywhere. Maybe not dirty, but messy. But I would say if they were to pick up the stuff off the floor, it wouldn't be that bad. It's like I'm not seeing towering piles of books reaching to the ceiling. The light of the, of the window and the ceiling light blotted out by the, the masses of books. We have to huddle next to our fires in order to read our textbooks. Mahu is humming as she typed into her keyboard. She had a big pair of headphones on. <laughs> Moika was kneeling on the carpet with her legs splayed, typing into her laptop at the low table. She too was wearing headphones. <laughs> Maho saw me standing in shock at the entrance and took off her headphones. Moka took off her earphones too. Sugoi! <laughs> Des! Mayuri was so astonished that she couldn't think of anything else to say. Did these two realize how much it took to freak out Mayuri? Is there a room in here anymore? I don't know. I just know books. I just question how well... <laughs> I question how well Maho would be able to reach some of these books that are so high up. I feel like finding some of those books in that pile on that desk might be a little difficult, but other than that, sure. The fact that Maho didn't seem to find anything wrong with this at all made my head hurt. <laughs> For her part, Mayuri was wandering through the labyrinth, excited. There were screens to divide the different parts of the room. The screens were different colored baby doll lingerie. Ah, this is 
ナギたくさん持ってるんだねマユリすまんが話がこんがらがるからちょっと部屋から出てくれあうん<笑> I tried talking to Maho and Moika but couldn't get any useful information When it came down to it Neither of them understood that this room was as messy as you could get. Everything they needed was always within arm's reach, so the two of them thought it as a pleasant place to work and live. This was definitely the reason why Ferris had come to me for help, and why Kuroki seemed to be on the verge of death. Kuroki, the Akia family's ultimate butler, had a policy of not letting a single speck of dust exist in a room. These two must have driven him over the edge. That explained the terror in his eyes. He probably tried to clean this room up when they first started living here. Thinking back, he'd been acting strange when I came here two days ago. But <laughs> why それにマユリを連れてくるように言った理由も謎だ。それについてはマユシーは理由が閃いちゃったのです。フェリスちゃんはきっとね、このお部屋をお片付けしてほしいんだよ。だからオカリンだけだったら諦めちゃってたかもし
他のところは全部私が片付けてるの Come to think of it, I've never seen any garbage on the floor of the Brawn Tube Workshop. Nice eyes went wide and her face blushed. On the verge of tears. Well, a girl her age wouldn't want to be called Sergeant, maybe. Nai ran off towards the station. Boshi? Nan no koto da. Suguni wakaru yo. Is it like Sergeant Clean Hat? <sighs> What have we got ourselves into 30 minutes later? Fubuki, Kaide, and Daru were the ones who answered my call. We met up with Nai and headed to the garbage pit that Ferris' condo had become. And then, Sergeant Clean revealed herself before us. Oh gosh. Nice hat. <laughs> <laughs> First Sergeant Kinyoji. <laughs><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> I feel like she's been watching too many movies. <laughs> I like this picture of Okreen. <laughs> ビリ。性格が変わるのです。性格が変わるとかじゃないだろ、あれ。人格が変わってる。小動物系ロリビ少女が本性を表すと Daru, please. <laughs> wow. 
territory we're going into right now. Kaidi and Fubuki happened to be Nakihabara, so they had offered to help, but Yuki had work and couldn't make it. For the sake of the Hashida's family future, I was glad. Maho and Moaki had already given up on trying to match Nai's high energy, and were taking their time washing the windows on the veranda. Cleaning that room seems like a lot of work. Cleaning minute personnel. And so the sergeant kept us cleaning until late into the night. は、どうなることかと思いましたが、皆様のおかげで立ち直れました。今日は腕に寄りをかけて料理を作りましたので、心ゆくまでお楽しみください。乾杯の温度は本日のヒーローであるナイニャにお願いするにゃ。お、お。
私敵人だぞ軍曹あっオカリアーニさん<笑>もちろん、調律は欠かしておりません。困ったな。じゃあ、一曲だけね。やったーカイデイさんのピアノを持ってきて、何にしようかな。Hopefully, something not copyright. She seemed happy as she stared at the keys and thought. Her ten fingers danced between the black and ivory keys, and a cheerful melody filled the room. She'd been very modest, but it was clear she had a lot of talent. As the song played on, the rest of the group stopped talking and moved, to the, cha moved the chairs and sofas around the piano. And then. Oh. Maho, who'd been sitting next to me, suddenly stood up. The sound echoed throughout the room a little louder than she thought it would. ごめんなさい。気にしないでください。みんなもおしゃべりしてていいからね。マホ kept standing up, as if lost in thought. ヒアジョウさん、どうかしたのか。いえ、Can I have another flashback, maybe? 仕事のお電話があったのを忘れていて、それを思い出しただけ。ごめんなさい、ちょっと電話してくる。マホ、quietly left the room。felt like something was strange。I thought for a moment and then suddenly looked where she'd been sitting。マホ's phone was still on the seat。so she wasn't making a call after all。I was a little worried so I took her phone and left the living room。The door to the guest room was open. I peeked inside and saw that Maho was standing in the middle of the room with the lights off. 
入っていいか。You still hear the piano very lightly playing. Or at least you could. I think it just stopped. She didn't tell me no. So I went inside and put the phone on the desk. そうね。特にどうって話でもないんだけど、聞いてもらった方が私もすっきりできるかも。さっきのピアノの曲、タイトル覚えてるトルコ行進曲だろ。そう、モーツァルトの曲よ。正確には、ケッヘル331モーツァルトピアノソナタ第11番第3楽章ピアノソナタ第11番は全3楽章構成でその中でも第3楽章にあたるトルコ行進曲がとても有名なのだけど私はどちらかというと第1楽章の静かなメロディーの方が好きクリスも同じことを言っていたそれをね思い出したの<笑>岡部さん「アマデウス」っていう映画知ってる I wasn't sure how to handle the sudden change of subject. あらすじくらいならモーツァルトの才能に嫉妬した音楽家の話だろそうアントニオ・サリエリ,サリ,エリ映画ではボルフガング・アマデウス・モーツァルトによって人生を狂わされた男として描かれている音楽家としての成功を約束されていたはずなのにモーツァルトが持つテンプの際に嫉妬し絶望してしまう自由奔放のモーツァルトの修行にみんなが眉を潜める中サリエリだけは彼の才能を見抜いていたそれこそアマデウスという名前の通り神に愛されたとしか言いようがないその才能をねサリエリは努力家だったわそんな彼には生まれ持った際で世間からもてはやされるモーツァルトが我慢できなかったそしてついにはモーツァルトを追い詰めてしまう追い詰めるモーツァルトを生き急がせて結果的に死に追いやってしまうの映画の話だろう私も詳しくは知らないけどでもモーツァルトの死には不審な点があるし毒殺の可能性もあったっていう話は聞いたことがある毒を持った犯人がサリエリかもしれないってこともねあ,あ Is there supposed to be a correlation between Maho choosing her name as Salieri and possibly feeling that Kurisu is Mozart? You know, it's like a, you know, comparison kind of thing. I feel like that might be going on right here. Chris が亡くなった1ヶ月後くらいに大学のネットワークが刷新されることになったの。マホはジャンプと another subject again。それで、ショインは全員新しいユーザー名を決めることになった。She might, she might mention this now, I think. 私は、特に考えもなく、サリエリにした。人工知能のアマデウスと対比としてね。I knew that. Seen her log in once in Waco City's offices. けれど、もしかしたら違うのかもしれない違う何が私はアマデウスじゃなくてクリス自身との対比として自分にサリエリと名付けたのかもしれない
私にとってクリスはアマデウスだった。There we go, that's, that's what I was thinking. In other words, Maho recognized Kurisu's talent more than anyone. And at the same time, she was more jealous of her than anyone else in the world. Just like Salieri. I didn't know what to say. I could see Maho's shoulders shaking a little. And then. Both Maho and I turned in the direction of the noise. Moika was standing outside the door, looking troubled. ちょっと待っててくれ。ヒアジョーさん、大丈夫？え、辛そうな顔をしているから。ええ、大丈夫。こんなに体を動かしたの久しぶりだから、ちょっと疲れちゃったのかも。そう。それならいいけどそれじゃ。モイカ went back into the living room. That was a surprise. I'd never seen Moika talk so much before. I'd never seen her talk that much in any world line, actually. And what's more, she'd been able to read Mahu's expression and even worry about her. Maybe living with Maho is having an effect on her. Gomenasai Okabesa. Saki no Hanashiwa was it? Wakata Kite Krete Arigato Koregrai de Yokeva. It's the more Maho smiled a little and left the room. Isn't it time for you to go to bed? <laughs> Alright, I'll leave that off for today. I'm going to do one more, but that'll be for in a couple days from now. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time for some more Steins Gate Zero. Bye!